Hi guys, how's it going? Good evening everybody. Lovely weather we're having, isn't it? And even though I know it may be gloomy, you know, I, I, I say this over and over and I firmly believe it. I know that God is truly in control and that my Redeemer lives. And I praise God for that. I praise God that he lives, he reigns, and he intervenes and intercedes. And that's and that no matter what, no matter what slander, no matter what lies are said, you know, or attacks are made against me, I know that no weapon formed against me will prosper. And I know that just as Joseph went through the things that he went through, which ha which is what this week's Time Warp Wife devotional uh, starts off with, I know that... No weapon formed against me will ever prosper. And just as Joseph went through all those things, God will restore and raise me up. And he has, and he's doing that right now. We've been going through some stuff. We really have. I can't go into detail because of the legality, uh, but God has been really good to us. Uh, one example of, of how good he's really been to us today is... Ricky went to get the car inspected and also an oil and lube. And while that was being done, the person that did the oil and lube job discovered that there was a particular piece in the car that was starting to loosen up or about ready to, it was going to fall off. And if it had done that while Ricky was out there doing deliveries for Papa John's, he would have been in trouble. It would have been bad. And all in all with everything, you know, with uh, inspection and oil and lube and everything, it was, uh, you know, under 75 bucks, which is a, you know, big praise. But, you know, uh, this week's Time Warp Wife devotional happens to feature a very is uh, interesting aspect of, of virtue, which is what this 30-day devotional is all about. I think it features two things, the virtue of integrity and the virtue of justice. And I think the perfect, you know, one of the perfect examples of this is Joseph. Uh, I'm reading in particular out of Genesis chapter 39. And as I really started, as I started the study today, the Lord really showed me just how these are a true virtue and how his justice reigns. It's perfect every time. And that he restores whatever is taken from us, whatever cost is involved in, in showing that virtue that because it, you know, as Joseph discovered concerning Potiphar's wife, being virtuous and having integrity can come at a high cost. And it could be the same way for you. If you're exercising, you know, integrity and virtue, it can come at a high cost for you. But if you submit your heart to God and you allow him to not only guide and direct your path, but to acknowledge him in everything and not give in, the cost will be far outweighed by the blessings he, he will bestow on you. And as I was reading this chapter and the study questions with it, I really got to thinking of how really difficult it is to take a stand and not compromise, you know, and, and not give in to temptation, you know, and, and be strong and firm like Joseph was. But most of all, how easy it is to give in to temptation. Uh, I had a friend of mine that faced a really serious temptation a few years ago on the job. He, this person was asked to lie, and this person was asked to take part in a very sinful uh, form of a, a sinful aspect of adultery. And because this person wouldn't do this, the people where he worked with really turned on him. In the end, this person was blessed and got justice, just as Joseph did. But it, it really... It, the scars from it really took its toll on this person. And, uh, you know, this per this person is, is still, you know, it, standing for the Lord, but it, it, he's got, this person's got the battle scars to really show for it. One of the things I, I saw with these questions, I thought they were interesting, but I, I have some questions of my own here that I'm going to pass on to the person who's doing this devotional. She asked this one question, what steps did Joseph take to try to avoid Potiphar's wife? Very obvious. The man refused to be in the same room with her. He did everything and anything he could to avoid her, but despite it, she still pursued him to the point of attempting to rape him. 
uh, if you read in, in, in the passage here, he, there's a point where there's nobody in the house but he and her. But God was there. And as the Asbury Bible Commentary stated in regards to this, in a context of seductive, seductive temptation, deception, slander, and injustice, Joseph em emerges unscathed. His faith, prudence, and integrity remain intact. The dream slash blessings that were promised to him you know, th th will not be placed in jeopardy because of a fling of passion. You know, he rejected her advances, and because of it, especially because he's fleeing, you know, with his dignity, I mean, nothing, you know, nothing like, you know, fleeing, she grabs him by his coat, you know, he's lucky to get out of there with his dignity intact. I'm not sure if that was the only thing he was wearing, but that's a scary thing. And she keeps this coat next to her, and she goes and tells Potiphar, her own husband, the biggest lie in the world that he raped her. And... Potiphar has him put in prison. But even in this nasty situation, God still is honoring and blessing Joseph. He gets put in charge of all the prisoners. And you see that in chapter 40 on. But there's something very interesting with this. You know, Joseph took these steps, but despite this, he this happens to him. But this was part of God's plan. You know, people, even when you're you feel like you're in the worst prison... God is there for you, and he's going to bring you through it. And, you know, one of the other questions she asked in this that I found interesting were what steps could Potiphar's wife have taken to ha avoid trouble and temptation? I think to start with, she could have accepted no for an answer. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there that don't. But ultimately, too, I believe that if she and Potiphar had kept the lines of communication and more so in their marriage, this never would have happened. I think this was a woman who was very insecure and dissatisfied with her marriage who took her husband for granted in more ways than one, and this happened. There's a couple of movies, you know, about Joseph. There's one in particular I think of where... In the movie, after everything's said and done, you know, um, he, Potiphar comes into his to his wife and says, "I've taken care of this," and she, I think she's hoping he's gonna gonna be killed. And he says, "I put him in prison," and and it's to keep. And she said, he basically intimates, "I'm keeping him safe from you because he knows that she's the one at fault." And you see later on that how people in the palace uh, know that she, know what type of person she is which is rather amazing. But it's also very interesting how it got me to thinking some different things myself. And I had some questions of my own that I wanted to ask you. And feel free, you know, I challenge you, you know, it's to answer them. Has there ever been a moment where you, where, where, have you ever faced a moment where you were tempted to do something you knew was wrong? And if so, how did you handle the situation? Hmm? I think these are very important things. I think we need to start really thinking how we can take a stand for God. Do so the right way. Do it. Be, be like Daniel and not compromise. And also Joseph, despite the cost it may bring us. And even when we are maligned and we're slandered and we're attacked, to not be to, to to keep holding on to God, and He will restore us. I mean, look at what happened to Job. Job did nothing to deserve what happened to him, but Job had all these horrible things happen to him. But God restored him because ultimately he Job acknowledged God's sovereignty, and he acknowledged that no matter what. He knew, he knew that God was still in control and God really cared about him. Now, I, I am urging all of you, if any of you are facing a temptation, if you are faced with a situation where you are, 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 are tempted to compromise and give in, remember what James 4 verses 11 and 12 state. Put it into practice 
and choose to resist the devil so that he will flee from you. That's my prayer for all of you. I know that's difficult. Trust me, I know it's difficult beyond anything, but you can do it if you choose to trust the Lord. I, as I said again, I know it's not easy. It never is. Following the Lord is never, ever, ever easy. If it were, I don't think we'd have all the things, we'd be experiencing all the things that we're experiencing right now. It's not a cakewalk being a Christian. But, you know, there's a, a, an interesting song um, about I enjoy the trip. And there's so much joy in the journey when we do follow Christ. That even in the midst of the pitfalls, as he says in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, he promises to make a, he promises to make a way for us. He, prom, he promises, excuse me, it's not 2 Corinthians 12, 10, but in scripture he does state that not only in our weakness is he made strong, which is what 2 Corinthians 12.10 is. He also states in scripture that he promises to make a way for us to be able to get through it, to be able to bear it. You know, I, I, one of the things I learned yesterday is that with what we go through, how do I describe this? that with what we go through, and I want to make sure I'm, I'm wording, wording this properly, but God promises that he, with what we do go through, that he will not allow everything to be taken from us. Remember what I was saying before? That if you turn to God in your time of trouble, Remember, the roots are still alive. He can still use you. And if you allow God to restore you, he will restore you. He understands, as I said, we suffer loss and we suffer things for a variety of reasons. And one of them is the attack of Satan. And he will be there for you if you choose to trust him. Remember that he is not only the God of what you had. He's the God of what you've lost. And he's the God of what you have left. Remember that. Please remember that. Just be willing to give them what you've got left. Okay? I've got to get going. And I'm going to close this for now, but I really urge all of you today that if you're facing some temptation, if there's something going on where Satan's trying to entice you into doing something that you know is wrong, and it's really... And it's, and it's a struggle. Go to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord and choose to resist. Follow James 4, verses 11 and 12, and trust me, he will be there for you. You guys have a wonderful evening. And remember that it is truly never over. Bye for now.